Right, welcome to today's session with Tegris Consulting. My name is Jarrett Donaldson and I'm a consultant here on the team. And what I'm going to demonstrate today is how to use DTW or the Data Transfer Workbench. And this is a tool that, that comes with SAP Business One that allows you to import data, large masses of data or small whatever you prefer, into SAP to save time from manually entering in one by one. And you can enter it in from an Excel sheet or, or a spreadsheet of some kind. And so what I'm going to show you today is just a basic one where we're going to create some uh, business partner master data records. And so we'll create a few, but you can create thousands. And there's a, a folder that comes with SAP that's going to show all of your templates and even give you samples of a, a spreadsheet that you'll want to create. Um, with the data that you need to import. So if we go here to templates under business partners, business partner master data, you can see a number of templates we have. So depending on what pieces of information we're updating is what we'll fill in here. And sometimes you have to do multiple. So if I had, you know, a business partner, just the basic header information, it'd be here in the business partner table. But if I was going to add contact people, I'd put the contact people here. And if I had addresses, I'd do it here. So usually you'll have a number of these that you'll update um, to get a full record put together for a business partner. But for today, we'll just use one. So we're going to do the basic business partner. And it's going to pull up here. And if I bring up the Excel file, we'll resize it to the window here. It was down on my other monitor. But here is the actual uh, template that SAP is providing. You can see up here in row one and two you have some information. Um, row one is giving you a little description of what goes where and it will give you details. You see if you hover over one it will tell you you know some requirements or whatnot. So this one is telling you this is a required field. It can have a maximum of 15 characters and it's a, a string type. So it's giving you some basic information of what's here. You can hover over ones and find the same pieces of information. So we're going to go ahead and create some some customers here. And so let's say we had our our numbering pattern where they all started with the letter W. So we'll do W1000. And let's say our next one's going to be W1001. And you know probably you already have this created where you've downloaded your customer list from another um, location or from that you already had it populated. But in my case, I'm going to create it on the fly here you'll give it its name so let's just say this one's going to be called one and then two and then just scroll down and then you just keep going down the line and fill in the the required data that you need and not everything's mandatory like I said so we won't have to fill everything in today but you can scroll over and see there's a lot of pieces of information that go here um, and you can even you know add in your own user to find um, tables as well. So you see I can, I've created one here called U underscore test which is a user defined field that I've created and um, you can look at our other videos on how to create user defined fields but this will show you how to populate that. So we'll scroll back over and let's see if there's anything else that we wanted to put in. Let's say we want to put their phone number in. We'll do 555 555. We'll just have that be the same one all throughout. It might change a little bit here. Um, so once you're satisfied and you've entered everything in that you want, you can go ahead and create these. And usually as long as you have your accounting uh, GL account determination set up, it won't require your accounts receivable or payable. But no, sometimes you'll get errors when you try to do an import because you know certain things. And that's a common one I'll see when you're first starting out is you don't have your GL account determination set up yet and it's going to require you to put some of these fields in. But ours is set up so we're fine. So once you're satisfied, the key thing is you have to save this as a CSV file. You can also do text or, or uh, you know, whatever you'd prefer, but those are the main common ones that you'll do. And so we'll come in here and do a save as, select where we're going to put it. So we're going to go ahead and put it on my desktop, and we're going to call it, let's say, um, BP import. So once we're satisfied, you click the type. So we're going to come in here and click it as a comma delimited file, a CSV. You can also do a text of some kind. We'll save it. It's going to let us know, hey, you want to keep using this format? We know. We'll click yes. And so now the key is when before you do your import with DTW, you have to exit out. It, DTW will give you errors if you keep this window open. So we're going to exit out of this. And now we're going to pull up um, DTW. And so 
it's usually going to be installed on the server but you can also get it installed on your own station as well uh, but we'll let it load here and then I'll pull it into the screen for us to see and the key important thing is you have to when you open it open it as administrator and I did not do that on purpose being to show you the errors it would get but you know when I go back in now if you go search for it again you know type in data transfer workbench or DTW you have to right click it and then always run as administrator and so now we're gonna go ahead and bring it in here and that helps eliminate some errors that you could have due to permission issues or whatnot and so I always recommend doing it as an administrator but it's gonna give me a list of all my databases I'll select the database I want type in my credentials here to verify that I do have access indeed to do this and it will think for a little bit and verify and make sure I'm I'm okay to log in and make these changes uh, but once it's done it will just bring me to a blank screen here and you'll see this will change to log off letting us know that we successfully logged in and once you're ready to go you come up here and click import and you go through a little wizard of what you're going to import so this is saying hey what type of data is this so ours is master data because it's business partners but you can also do setup data and transactional data and don't worry if you select the wrong one as you go further on it will prevent you and tell you to come back so if you don't know just guess and you can come back and learn um, and then you tell it do you want to add new data update existing data or do a combination of both since we're adding new data we're going to leave it here and then you tell it what kind of object are you that you're what table you're updating so ours is business partners you can see some of them are grayed out and that's what I was telling you during step one if you click the wrong area it's gonna gray it out and that's when you'll know you have to go back and click the other one but ours is correct here business partner master data so I'm gonna proceed and then it's gonna ask me what file am I importing and so up here first you have to determine what file type it is so if you did text instead of a CSV or a, you did a semicolon uh, delimited you can you have to select which type you're using so ours is common delimited so we're fine then if you were doing addresses or contacts you'd select the file here ours was just business partner so we're gonna select here find the file we created BP import and then we're gonna go ahead and click next and it's gonna go ahead and show us the mapping a lot of these fields have been defaulted in but you can see the yuan that I created the user defined field or custom field it doesn't know what to put it so you can go ahead and click in here and if you had data there you could select the field inside of that table that you want to map it to. Since we're not updating, we don't have to do that. Then we're going to do next. And then now, before we actually do the import, it's going to ask us, how do you want to handle errors? So you can say, hey, I want to cancel the import, you know, roll back anything. If there's an error, op the complete opposite, ignore all errors and just proceed with all of the, the records that work. Or you can specify a specific number before you proceed. So I usually do this one. That's my, my personal favorite, but you can do however you'd like and then before I click next I usually do a little simulation and so I'm gonna let this simulation run it's gonna tell me if there were error, any errors in my import file that I had created so I'm gonna run it and you can see that it went ahead and said zero, six of them were imported successfully and zero were not imported so everything was fine and so we're gonna go ahead and click close and then we're gonna come over here and it's gonna give us a little you know detail log of what was there I'm going to click close, and then I can continue to the next one and actually do the import. So you see it's going to do, it's going to sit down and process, and depending on how much data you have, the longer it will take. Mine was really quick, so it was just a few pieces of information, but I've had a couple that take multiple hours, depending on how many you have. And once again, it will give you a little summary. It looks like all of them are processed. We'll click finish. It's going to give me the log again. I can click close once I'm satisfied. And now if I minimize this, go back into SAP and I think if I'm correct I don't have any that are starting with W so these should be the last data records and sure enough there it was it created it put the code in there the name that I gave it and then the phone number and I can keep scrolling through and they're all here so it worked and if I needed to add more information later on I can always go back in and create the same type of a file put in the customer code that I want to update as the first line that's mandatory and then update the rest of the piece of information and then I can re-follow the same process so it's a really nice uh, tool and feature especially when you're importing large pieces of of information at a time and so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here 
And uh, that will conclude our demonstration today on the data transfer workbench and importing your own data in SAP. But please take a look at our other videos for more information and tips and tricks on how to use SAP Business One.